Hi guys, it's me again, Taiwo. So I just thought I'd make a very quick video. Um, at my Gideon, at my Gideon, at my son's school to pick him up. So I just thought I'd make a very quick video because I had my dentist appointment this afternoon, and um, people will be thinking, "Who am I talking to right now?" <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. So I went to the dentist today, and. Um, I told him about the old situation, you know, how I think I am very, very allergic to the metal filling it did um, 20 months ago. And um, that, you know, I just feel like it's dangerous. And, like, I didn't sound rude. I was very, very polite because I was very conscious. Because I know this thing about health practitioners that um, whenever you're trying to, like, tell them about their job well should I say tell them about their job they always tend to form a fence of defense you know like a block of defense so I was careful of what I was saying to him so I told him that um, you know that I've noticed that I am probably developing some symptoms from the feeling because um, I compared the way I'm feeling or the way I was feeling, or the way I, I'm feeling, yeah, after the feeling, and then I compare that to the way I was before the feeling, and, um, you know, that is def is completely different, and I did a little bit of research, not even a, li a lot of research, and um, I've come to conclusion that I think I'm allergic to it, that I decided to come and see him first before seeing the doctor. So then he, got, he was like, okay, what are, the, what are the symptoms? Have you been itchy? And then I told him, oh yes, I've actually been very, very itchy because that's also something that I've noticed as well. I'm, like, I get very itchy without rashes. So anyway, I told him about all the symptoms I have developed, you know, and they are a lot, like loads of symptoms. I would just, like, say some if I can remember now. I know air loss is definitely number one. Mood swing shortly like a couple of weeks after the feeling i was diagnosed with depression and anxiety and then um constipation mood swings um insomnia like i don't i can't remember the last time i had a very very good sleep like i i lie down on bed and i just wouldn't be able to sleep then fatigue i've been very very super sluggish very sluggish i don't want to do anything in the house because i feel like you know it is a mission um you know, I'm not motivated. That's something to do with depression. But I told him about all these symptoms that I've noticed after the feeling. And I also made one thing clear to him that I've, like, I went, because he was like, so have you been to the doctors to speak to the doctor about all these symptoms? And I was like, I've been to the doctors on countless lines. Like, I've been to the doctors. They thought I was depressed. They referred me to a perinatal nurse, a psychiatrist. You know, and they've given me antidepressant. I've used all those things, and it still doesn't work. I feel like it still doesn't work. I've not, um, I've not noticed any significant change. And then I removed my hat. I, I showed him my edges, and how you know fragile, um, thin my hair has, you know, become, and you know, and then there was a lady there, like I think she's an assistant dentist or something, and then she goes, oh. About the hair, I just wanted to mention to you that my daughter is eight months, so you get hair loss after having a baby. And I was like, yes, I know, like, I know there's something called um, postpartum hair shedding, that I thought I was going to postpartum hair shedding. But I saw a trichology that had a look at my scalp, and she was the one that told me that you might be going through a mild alopecia. So, like, I, and I told her one thing as well, that people tend to mix alopecia up with postpartum hair shedding. They are completely different. When you're losing your hair to postpartum hair shedding, it is fine. It's like I said in one of my videos, it's like you're stopping your body from growing. And that would happen anyway. But after six months, you know, your hair should reduce the shedding state. And then you should be getting some fresh growth coming forth. But in my own case, that was that's not the situation. You know, you said your daughter has eight months. You might still be experiencing shedding. Or it might still be that you're just growing out of that phase. But for me, my daughter is 19 months now, and my hair should stop shedding now. You know, this is not the first time I'm having a child. I've had a baby before, and my hair didn't fall out like this. You know, so after speaking to the 
to the guy, to the dentist anyway, then he was like, it, it, it told me something that was very, very shocking. He was like, oh, you know, after she, he gave me the chance to speak and then afterward he goes, um, firstly, I want to just, I understand, I completely agree that you might be allergic to it, that maybe you are reacting to it, but you might also want to check into other things, that it might not just be the, the amalgam, that it might be maybe you're anemic and all those things. And those are things that I've also checked myself. You know, I was on iron, iron tablet. I know all these things. You know, the, the amalgam seems to me that like is the only thing that I need to check. You know, so I told him, and um, then he told me that there uh, might be other things, but he wants to also assure me and say something now that amalgam has got mercury in it, and mercury isn't dangerous. Like that was what he told me. He said mercury is not dangerous. Like guys, the moment he said that, I just kind of like I was like I just kind of. Sh I just thought, you know what, no matter what I tell this guy, he wouldn't listen to me. It was like, make your reason dangerous that um, sometimes it's in the brain, sometimes it's, 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 um, it's um, psychology, that, um, you know, you're thinking you're like that because of all what you've read and everything. And, you know, you just kind of brush through the fact that it is not dangerous, that if it is dangerous, why would the UK government put it out to the public? And then I said to him that it's cheap. You know, it is cheap. That is why they would put it out to the, to, the, to the to the public. But anyway, so in to cut the long story short, it told me that mercury filling or the amalgam filling is completely hundred percent safe. That if I was um, having an infection or poison from the amalgam filling, that I would not be sitting with him, speaking to him right now. That I would be on the bed in the hospital. That was what he told me. And then I told him that, okay, it might, that might not be the case with me. Because one thing you also need to take into consideration is that everybody has got different sy symptoms. The way we process things through our body is different. You know, maybe I'm, I'm um, taking a little bit in through eating, through chewing, through drinking of water. You know, this, it is mercury. It could be melting. It could be dissolving little by little and then going into my food and and all those things and um so so i told him all these things anyway but i was still like you know i kind of understood that he didn't want to really listen to what i was saying and he thought you know it, it was i could tell it was um it was it was more of his practice it was like the way it was coming across to me was as if he didn't say this to me but i could i could perceive that it was trying to make me understand that he's been doing that job for years he knows what he's doing so he won't really take what i'm telling him in you know, so after that, um, he then um, he agreed that okay, that's fine. I might be allergic to it. That um, they also do um, that they can take it. It can take it out and then do a refill with something called um, compost. That's something I also need to look into. And then I asked them about the procedure I would need to follow. And then it was like, oh, it doesn't really need to follow anything. And I was like, do I need to get myself ready or anything? And he was like, no, you don't need to just book an app and I come in and then I would just do a drilling into your the mercury, bring it out and then refill. Guys, like, I was like, so there's no procedure. Do you not, do, do you not, I was thinking you would, um, maybe uh, melt it or something not drill into the mercury that means you know i could take some in when you're drilling it you know but it was like no no it's fine we'll just drill it and put it out and anyway it sounds to me that it's not a it doesn't really know much about removing mercury from a patient's teeth that was how it sounded to me okay so he said i should book an appointment and come back and remove it and he said i would have to pay which i'm fine to pay but i did pretend that as if i was going to go back there but i'm definitely not going back there i would i would go through different like i need to go and see my doctor tomorrow first see what the doctor says and then i would like I, i'm not working with just what they tell me anymore i'm working with their treatment and my treatment i need to put my myself first because i'm the one going through all these symptoms and i need it to stop they don't need to need it to stop because it's not them experiencing this thing. So um, anyway, he said I should come back in two weeks' time. I've booked an appointment and I did act as if I would be going back there, but I wouldn't be going back. I would definitely be cancelling the appointment, and then I'll put myself on a heavy metal detox process. That's something I've also read about. I'm res I'm still researching about that. 
um, I would I would go through that for about two or three weeks then I would see how my body is then there's somewhere I live in Coventry um, there's somewhere somewhere I think in Soli o or Birmingham that does a safe mercury filling removal so I think that's where I would go to and discuss the whole situation with them I don't mind paying even up to 100 pounds I need to get this thing out of my mouth and just like live healthy and safe and be there for my kids for my children for my husband and just be me be there for myself like I have to make another video I think health professionals need to calm down and listen more to what their patients have to say they don't always have to act I see if I know my job, I know what I've been doing, and um, I've been doing this for years, and it's ridiculous. Anyway, I just thought I'd make a very quick video. They've opened my son's gate, so I need to go and get him. I shall speak to you guys later. Bye, love you.